Hey guys, I'm Mark. I'm Alon. And welcome to another episode of The Next Man Up. Well, hey listeners, welcome back once again to The Next Man Up podcast, where we are raising up the next generation of men of faith and character, because when boys become healthy and godly men, everyone benefits. I am Mark Stanifer, your host as always, and I'm joined once again by my co-host, my compadre, Josh Wilson. Hey, Josh. Hey, hey. So, Josh, last week we played part one of our conversation with Dale Thompson, and uh, what a what a fantastic conversation we had. He's a he's a professional counselor out of Florida. Works a lot with boys and with with men, helping them through some really difficult issues, including those around sexuality and pornography. And listeners, if you haven't yet listen to part one, I encourage you to go there and listen listen to that one first so you get kind of caught up and uh, get a sense for who Dale is and, and the conversation that, um, that we're going to just jump right in here in, into here in a minute. Um, but, but Josh, it was, it was really, really good. Yeah, I really enjoyed our conversation with Dale. Uh, I think he had some really great input on uh, how pornography uh, interrupts boys development process uh, and how we get beyond just telling our boys to stop it, uh, but to give them a bigger vision of what could be and what healthy relationship looks like. Yeah, exactly. Healthy manhood and, and how the, the rite of passage and the initiation work that we do here really plays into to helping boys over overcome that, um, that draw. Um, there's a, there's a lot more that we get into with this one. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of good insight and his own experience from dealing with, with this, with, with clients. And, uh, so we're excited to bring you the second half of this conversation. So let's just do that without any further ado. Let's, let's get to it. So here's part two of our conversation with Dale Thompson. Yeah, I'm I'm putting myself in the place of the dad who's listening, thinking, man, I, I've I, I thought I've done things right at home that with the internet filters and I'm 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 creating a safe environment at home so that we don't have exposure to those types of movies or music that's sexually explicit content. And and, and yet I, I'm still now I'm I as as that dad that I'm picturing. I need to be aware that I, I've got to normalize the changes that are happening in my son's body. Otherwise, uh, even without me knowing it's happening, he could be developing in in this silence and secrecy and and um, accumulating the sense of shame about what is actually natural and good and and God ordained. Exactly. Yeah. If you're worried about it in adolescence, it's too late. Fathers need to be connected with their sons early. They need to role model comfort in their own skin and their bodies. They need to not be afraid of nudity in front of their kids. They need to be just aware that this is who we are as men and, and, and exist in this space. We have objectified the body so much. It used to be such a huge thing for women, of course, but also for men. And just uh, are we comfortable in our skin as we're developing and clearly with the tremendous amount of hormonal change that happens through adolescence, that creates enough confusion in itself. Um, then you add the other piece of just growing up in an environment that maybe isn't as healthy around body messages and terms, um, then it can be confusing. Uh, it really needs to start when a child is in infancy. There's a, a couple good books. I'll try to get you the resources on talking with kids about what their body's about uh, early on in a progressive series. I don't have it in front of me right now. Uh, that helps with dads that are um, able to do that. Uh, if you start on the fifth book, you're a little bit handicapped, but if you start at day one and how God made our bodies for a purpose, um, it really builds from there. But I would encourage all dads to, to speak of their body parts in the appropriate anatomo anatomically appropriate terms. Um, we objectify when we start to label things with slang terms, et cetera, um, which just gives the child a better vocabulary to communicate what's happening with their bodies as well as just to normalize what it is and not distance it uh, psychologically from their true being, which it really is. Dads need to know what their experiences was like and to be careful that they're coming from a healed, healthy place as they work through what's going on with their, their boys and adolescents, as well as with their sexual development. Um, probably, you know, the stats used to say three out of five women were sexually abused growing up, maybe one out of five men. I would say it's much closer to 50, 60% if you just add early sexual exposure to the list. 
um, and, and understanding there's an impact to what that is um, and that there may still be some buried shame in that space and that would impact their ability to feel comfortable addressing whatever may be going on with their son. One of the things that I imagine the, the listeners are thinking at this point is, okay, guys, you, you've been talking a lot about sex and sexuality, but isn't the issue really just pornography? And uh, I know for, for me, Mark, personally, growing up in a, in a conservative uh, Christian environment, it, it, there, was a, there was a lot of emphasis placed on don't, don't do porn. Don't get exposed to porn. Don't spend your time on porn. And yet, at 12 years old, I remember very clearly when when the, the first time happened. Let, let let's address the topic of pornography specifically. And 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 this is a bit of a leading question, but why it's uh, why it's not really about pornography, really in the end. What's so difficult about porn is just the access in this um, definition of what sexual experiences should be. Um, versus what reality is you know pornography is a misrepresentation of what would be a healthy christian marriage sexually and and, um, biases the perception of what someone might think would be normal most kids when they're being exposed to it in pre-adolescence and adolescence they don't even have the vocabulary to understand what i just said Mm -hmm. to really digest what that means this is an emotional experience so you get um i'll call it this a trauma bond with a dysfunctional exposure that further triggers and miswires the brain's understanding of what sexual experiences should be, uh, as well as what um, added to the piece of where we talked about it hijacking your brain, um, very confusing later on. Uh, because you don't know when you're a 12 year old that you're, if you're being exposed to porn and masturbating, that at 32, when you have this perception of dysfunction in your marriage, and that thing is so convenient that you're sabotaging true uh, godly intimacy with your wife. You're just thinking, I deserve a break. I want a break. And um, I'm not having sex with my wife this last month because she's mad at me. But back to your original question, back to the pornography piece, this dynamic of what the exposure does to hijack the brain um, and this problem with really this need to belong, to feel loved, to feel connected. Um, it's hard to disconnect it from that experience if you have an early exposure. So how do you unhijack the brain? Well, first is awareness. Um, uh, working on if it's a true addiction pattern, um, it's about then getting in community that also supports accountability for the behavior pattern um, and then developing a corrective emotional experience that allows for the healing. Um, if it's a true addiction, there's always a vulnerability, but in many cases we can create healing experiences through treatment and therapy um, as well as uh, sustained sobriety from the behavior that leads to the confidence. So everybody wants to feel valued and they want to be hopeful that they can overcome these obstacles, whatever it may be. Um, and then, you know, I truly believe, and I've seen it uh, being on the front row of so many testimonies related to this, is that God's going to use it, regardless if you have so much embarrassment or shame about it. This is something that so many men face uh, that you're not alone and that you can overcome it. So, so I've heard a statistic, something in the range of like 70% of adolescent boys get exposed to pornography uh, like before the age of 16. Oh, it's, 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 I can guarantee you for boys and girls, for boys and girls in our culture, it's a hundred percent. Even in the okay, faith-based so, communities. There's, mm, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind. So, so my question is, as a father, how, how do, as a, as a father, how do I unhijack my boy's mind? The best response to that is really look at the broader approach of what you're doing as a father in role modeling to your son, what a healthy man is, Mm -hmm. Um, depending on your philosophy and what you're involved with, that would mean a whole lot of extra structured activities that provide and feed the the son with so much more to life and truth about life than if they have an exposure um, or consistently are exposing themselves to pornography. our approach was always surround your kids with great role models, particularly in adolescence. They uh, don't want to listen to you anyway, especially if it's father to son or mother to daughter. So you need to know that you put them in community where other people will speak truth and life to them about these type of things. If it comes up, uh, we'd be very um, clear about expectations and communicate about expectations without labeling it with shame 
uh, but providing interventions if there's an occurrence um, so that there is accountability um, and and trying to do your best to restrict access when that's uh, an issue. Access and privacy are the two things that allow kids to get so much um, exposure to porn. Um, so that would also mean engagement would need to start way before then, just like with the talking about their body. Those things mm -hmm. the father needs to know just how valuable they are to the son and consistently be engaged with who they are as a person. Um, we get in parent traps all the time about achievement driven parenting and there's what I want you to do and achieve and live vicariously through our kids. Uh, we have to meet them at a place where they see themselves as human and healthy from the jump. Uh, just the point is that God made them very unique and special for who they are. Uh, and then we are to shepherd that as they grow. And it's a humbling blessing to be able to have a child and to be able to be um, able to shepherd who they are, to steer their giftings and to launch them into adulthood in a, in a beautiful way where they'll, where, where they'll flourish. It sounds as though what you're recommending that do uh, in order to combat some of this uh, early um, sexual short circuiting stuff um, is to overwhelm that stimulus with other stuff to give uh, so much other input into your boy's uh, growth and development that it overwhelms those uh, early exposure uh, short circuiting events. Does that sound right? Am I understanding? Kind of what you're uh, yeah, I think you're well. far off. Absolutely. Um, one of the ways to look at it is if we're um, encouraging other giftings as they're growing up and again, starting super early, those caverns start to really open up in the development of the architecture of the brain. And there's so much more ego strength connected to that uh, pro-social behavior um, and contributory behavior, uh, whatever that could be. And a lot has to do with learning styles for children and all type of other things that would lead to the expansion of the potential architecture of the brain. Um, but that fits right in that, that wheelhouse so that if there's a, a one-off exposure or what have you, it has minimal impact. And even if there's a heavier impact, uh, but we cannot forget just how important the characterological development is crystallized through adolescence for our boys uh, and those uh, community experiences. If it's through sports teams, church activities, uh, uh, creative outlets uh, as a collective whole, uh, it really helps pull them forward, student government activities, et cetera, um, that give them further skills development, understanding what manhood is, what what uh, tools they can have in their toolbox to overcome some of the other things when they're feeling inferior based on a failing of the flesh, maybe in the sexual area. Any effort towards this is better than nothing. The passivity is what drives this lost space in our kids' minds of who they are. The more we can direct intentionality around it and the more we can engage community of accountability peers, the more the collective pulls them forward in healthy ways. We know what the street's going to provide for them. We know what the internet's going to provide for them. We know what the social media is going to provide for them, which is the least common denominator of what culture's going to have. Uh, and it's going to be fire hose down their throats uh, through 15 different apps, et cetera, at a volume that's excessive. If you look at the average kid's screen time at seven, eight hours a day, it's more than they do anything else but sleep. Um, so we have to be proactive and intentional to get in front of that if we're ever going to. That feels like a significant change from two or three decades ago, uh, to be honest now, four decades ago, when, when I was growing up, where, where the message was just don't or, or stop. Um, I, I hear a significantly different message that you're delivering today, Dale, that, that feels um, feels like it, it, it opens up more conversation, it opens up more options. It opens up the, the alternative to, to really fill that space with something valuable instead of the message to the boy from whoever, whether it's pastor or father or whomever, just to don't fill that space with, with porn. Well, it's a, it's a two-dimensional answer to a three-dimensional problem in, in, in relationship um, response and, and awareness of change happens in the, in the true connection for sure. You know, just the, all the research says the just say no to drugs program was a failure. This type of dynamics, the same thing. Of course, parents didn't know then maybe or weren't aware. Uh, and sometimes it's in denial about what their understanding of it is or uh, shame from their own uh, generational sin progression from their childhood experiences 
passed on by their father. Um, they just flat out denial. Um, just what, what does a teenager hear when they, when a parent says, don't do that, they're going to do it. Mm. Um, and not only that, but I'm going to do it in a way where I'll lie around it so much that you're not going to be able to catch me. Um, there's recent research on how often kids lie to their parents and it's just staggering. <laughs> 80, 90% of the interactions are deception or deceptive intent. Oh, wow. Um, wow. So, uh, you know, that's, but that's always been a dynamic in adolescence. The adolescent wants to be autonomous. That's a developmental stage where they're preparing for adulthood. They're testing limits. They're testing sense of self. They're scared about who they are, but they want to prove themselves in an unproven uh, capacity yet developed. Um, and so, you know, why are we surprised then if they're going to be in denial to us or lie to us if we directly ask them? Now, if we have a longstanding relationship and we have the ability to communicate and create honest communi- communication and community around them, um, you know, the influences get a lot more predictive in terms of success coming out of that. It, it sounds like what what you're suggesting it, it dovetails very well with what we're trying to do here, and, and that is to leverage the tool of initiation or rite of passage or intentionally pointing your boy toward what it means to be a man and in, in a healthy and appropriate way, not not just the, the messages that, that we get from the world that are insufficient and, um, you know, at best insufficient, but, but like just, just recapturing, recapturing that whole process of, of pointing, aiming the boy towards something that's big and, um, that's worthy of reaching for and, and at 12 years old beyond grasp, but, but yet within reach in, in, uh, in, in the distance as they, as they look out like that, that's, that's what I hear is a, is a potential significant, um, remedy or antidote to the, to the challenge of just, just letting boys flounder. And, um, in, in particular, you know, we we're talking about sex here, but in, in the bigger context, I, I hear that as a, as a dad to be able to point toward what it means to be a man in a big and and healthy way can can be extremely powerful yeah i'd agree a thousand percent you and i had a prior conversation about uh you know parenting and the role of adolescent progression for boys and looking at anthropological history of Mm -hmm. when a boy gets to a certain age through puberty they're taken away from the cleave of the mother and, and surrounded by the group of men and there's usually a pain ritual or a survival ritual that allows them to feel some line of demarcation between childhood and adulthood, as well as being embraced and supported by the collective body of men to pull them forward in their inequities and, and weakness if that, that is present. Um, and understanding that there's a shelter there, there's a, a, a guiding force there that's so beyond their ability to resist that it can't but catapult them forward in a healthier way than they would have without it. One other thing I did want to weigh in, Mark, is that we have to remember that fathers are not parenting in a vacuum. Um, Usually there's a mom involved or a significant other involved. um, And it's really important that moms allow fathers to parent in the context of this area. Uh, With ever, uh, depending on the relationship, sometimes there's a significant amount of sabotage, if you will, um, because the mom is not understanding the need for the father to really be embracing containment and control of the adolescent boy's behavior, uh, that would translate maybe to enabling or, or creating an escape valve for the kid or protectionism, et cetera. On the other end, the mom might be a bit more of the disciplinarian, if you will, or the stricter one. And in that case, the dad needs to really step up and allow the mom to back off and let the father be the father in that time, which is so critical in their development. So all the more reason for the the dad to not go passive in this space, e- even if even if dad has had his own challenges in the past and and is still working through them, the the answer is not passive. The answer is active and and lean in. Yeah. 
So Dale, for the for the dad that's listening out there that is like, boy, this has got my attention and I, I need to I need to go a little bit deeper further into into this topic and, and and either work for work that I need to do on my own or for my boy, what resources would you recommend they take advantage of? Um, well, they can certainly reach out to me. I'd be happy to help them through um, services. Um, through video conferencing for direct treatment you can reach me at my email, which is Dale Thompson, L M H C at gmail.com, which would be the best uh, connection that way. Okay. Uh, so my website is Dale Thompson, L M H C.com, uh, which you can find uh, another link to be able to send me a message if you like. Um, otherwise there's some great resources, especially if exposures happened. Um, that are through several of the uh, publishers. I sent them to you, Mark, on a link or on an email. Uh, so the, there's uh, one that's called the Conquer Series and the Fortify Series. Fortify Series provided by the group that says, um, it's specifically called Fight the New Drug, really recognizing porn addiction and what it is in our culture. A tremendous amount of resources at their website. It's fightthenewdrug.org. That's just fightthenewdrug.org all run together. Okay. Uh, really good understanding of resources and opportunities to, to see it for what it truly is. Um, and they have some books that are available. The Fortify, Se- Fortify S- series, which is the Fighter's Guide to Overcoming Pornography Addiction, is one that's very uh, helpful for adolescents and men to really see the truth about what pornography is, uh, including factors related to the abuse of women in the process and how it hijacks who we are as men in relationships. And there's numerous other resources that uh, Mark, you can put on the website that I sent you uh, related to um, healing if you've been abused as well as if you've been exposed inappropriately. We didn't touch on it too much, but many men are sexually abused directly and there's a, a, a wounding there that's deep in soul depth that um, really needs to be addressed if you really want to get some healing and health. Um, uh, and then the other general material that's relatively healthy, healthy for most men and boys is the Every Man's Battle series by yep. Stephen Atterburn and his folks. They have one for every son's battle, preparing your son for battle, every woman's battle, and overcoming uh, abuse, etc., or experiences of, of, of a spouse exposing, uh, turning to pornography. Um, uh, so hopefully those will be some helpful resources that I'm sure you'll be able to put in a clearer way on your website for everybody. Yeah, that's great. Dale, thank you so much for your time today. This is uh, this is one of those topics that we we all know is a is a big challenge, and and yet we fight against the the ten the 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 tendency towards secrecy or isolation or, or shame, and so. I just really appreciate you putting words to this for the encouragement um, and, and your your willingness to just to just address it to say say it like it is and 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 give us hope that there's there's we don't have to be stuck in these these hijack situations or in the the trauma or the experiences of our past and when you incorporate the God component it can actually be redemptive. And like you said early on, um, strengths or, or gifts that, that we can use to influence those, whether family or uh, socially around us, that, that we have opportunity to influence. So thanks again for being with us for your time. I really appreciate it. And, and I know our listeners have, have benefited from what you've had to share. Oh, it's my pleasure, Mark. It's great to be on today with you. Well, listeners, if you have any feedback for us, you know the drill, feedback at the nextmanup.com. We'd love to uh, to have your, your questions, your, your insight, maybe even a, a story of how this episode has touched you. We would, we'd love to interact with you that way. You can also hit us up on our Facebook page, NMU Journey is how to find us there. There are multiple ways. So if you're willing, we would love to hear from you. Dale, thanks again. Josh, good to be with you again. And listeners, until next time, adios. Adios. Take care, guys. Hey, listeners, thanks for journeying with us on this Next Man Up podcast. 
You know, we would love to hear from you. Maybe you have a question or an idea, perhaps a topic for us to consider. If that's you and you want to reach out to us, you can get us at feedback at the nextmanup.com. That's feedback at the nextmanup.com. Again, we'd love to hear from you. Until next time, we'll see you later.